<laughs> Kyrie! You require motivation. Hey, did you hear the news? Apparently, the fact that I think painting literal Nazis as sad and sympathetic is a bad thing means that I'm a sociopath who hates compassion. I mean, I've talked about the importance of compassion many times, but how silly of me to realize that compassion was an absolute and not something taken on a case-by-case -case basis. Gosh, how could I have been so stupid? Silly me with my nuance. What I really should have been doing is taking one moral concept and trying to force it to apply to every situation. That's what the truly smart people do. Oh. And let me deliver my thesis to you in this really soft, reassuring tone, because I wouldn't want you to think I'm being too abrasive and start plugging your ears and refusing to listen to everything I say because I won't delicately hold your grown-ass adult hand through concepts that literal children would have no trouble understanding, you fucking idiot. As I mentioned in several other videos, community perception and absolutism kneecaps the discourse. People accept that redemption arcs are good, but they don't know why, and so assume that all redemption arcs are good regardless of quality. This isn't even getting into snapshot redemptions, which are just redemption stories written back Badly, often because the writer doesn't understand why redemption arcs work and is just hastily rushing one in because they think they're supposed to. In reality, redemption arcs and forgiveness only work in certain scenarios with certain types of characters. Trying to force redemption onto characters who are not suited for it is only going to seem lazy at best and downright toxic at worst. I've spoken before about how Zuko had the best redemption story, but on reflection, I can't really call that a redemption. Zuko starts his story hunting for the Avatar to restore his honor, but the incident that resulted in him losing his honor in the first place was him speaking out against a general who wanted to sacrifice new recruits to the Fire Nation. Zuko explicitly called them out with, how dare you betray them? Zuko's entire arc was about realizing that he didn't need to regain his honor, he was the only one who had it. I say Zuko's story wasn't a redemption because Zuko wasn't truly a villain. Antagonist, sure, but antagonist by circumstance rather than outright villainy. Despite my own comparison to Zuko's story as a redemption arc done well, it really doesn't fit as a redemption necessarily. Honestly, I think the use of the term redemption arc so casually is part of what's led to the current problem. As I mentioned in Little Mary quite contrary, a nuanced concept tends to slide off people's brains while the buzzword tends to stick, and a lot of people tend to hyperfixate on the fact that a redemption is in the story rather than how well it was executed. They got a redemption, therefore it's good, because redemptions are good. So what's the problem? Simple. Redemptions have to be earned. You don't just get them. A big problem with modern cartoons is that they tend to just shovel redemption stories onto characters who haven't earned them, usually within a single episode. Let's start with the big one, the diamonds. Yes, I am gonna beat this drum again, shut the fuck up. In Steven Universe, the diamonds are talked down from their fascist tyranny by... Well, essentially a comeback. It's revealed in what is hopefully the final episode of Steven Ubermensch that White Diamond is sad and tries to force everyone to be perfect. And Steven essentially just says, Hey, it's bad. Aren't you tired of being bad? The problem with the diamonds in particular is that they've crossed what's known to people who have even so much as glanced at TV tropes within the last five years as the moral event horizon. This is the point where their actions have become so heinous, so abhorrent, so completely evil that there is no escape from it. When villains or antagonists cross the moral event horizon, redemption is simply no longer an option for them. The diamonds cross this almost instantly in the series. They are routinely committing genocide against their own people for not living up to their idea of perfection. They show a complete disregard for organic life, and they talk about obliterating millions of gems by blasting Earth with such a casual air that it sounds like mass murder is a common everyday occurrence for them. They've crossed the moral event horizon. God, I fucking hate using TV tropes terms in serious videos. But they get hastily rushed redemptions anyway. Why? Well, because Steven Universe as a show is pushing a narrative of problems being solved by talking about your feelings, and Rebecca Sugar has no restraint when it comes to stakes. If the Diamonds were meant to have a redemption arc, their crimes should not have been as extreme as they are. The Diamonds are Nazis, there's no denying this. They behave the same as Nazis, they believe the same things as Nazis, they have a body count on par with the Nazis, they are Nazi ex-spies to a T. The problem is entirely in the stakes. People tell me that the Diamonds are a metaphor for abusive parents, and while I can certainly see that, the fact of the matter is 
is that they didn't need to be a totalitarian space empire to do this, and there's the problem. Steven Universe is reaching for allegory and metaphor to portray things that they could just as easily portray directly, and thus we reach for space alien rebellion and war because for some reason, Sugar wants everything to be super epic. Steven Universe is full of crossed wires and mixed messages, which is what makes the redemption of the diamond so gross. Sugar wanted to tell a story about talking out your feelings and abuse of parents growing up and cutting out their bullshit, or at least she does this week, the themes change every time she's asked, which is actually a great idea for a story, but she made those people also be space fascists, which completely upended that story. She wrote a redemption story for characters who are irredeemable. And this problem is all over the medium right now. Redemption stories get hastily bolted onto characters who go extremely over the line, cross that moral event horizon, and then keep sprinting past it. And oftentimes the only pressure valve the character has is feeling sad about something in the past, and oftentimes said past trauma isn't actually trauma. Starlight Glimmer is the most egregious example of that particular bugbear because she started a totalitarian death cult and enslaved ponies to her will entirely because a friend moved away when she was little. Now, this is something a lot of people my age experienced when we were little. Friends move away and it's really sad, but never has someone started a totalitarian death cult as a result of it because it's not that traumatizing. Starlight's actions are so extreme and over the line and her excuse is so pathetic, but she encounters no punishments and no skepticism. She's given a massive amount of privilege and status and throughout the series, she routinely relapses into her previous shitty behavior and she never improves. This is a bad redemption story. See, we can hand ring about whether this kind of blind compassion is a good thing or not, and that's what most of you are going to do anyway. The comment section is going to be full of, so I guess you don't believe in compassion then? Well, I say it's going to be full of it, but let's be honest, I'm not going to approve that shit. But the thing is, it's not about compassion. It's about bad writing. I'd love to talk about the philosophy of compassion and forgiveness, but we need a good story first. Those two stories don't reach that point. Let's go back to the diamond, since it's an extreme example and makes my point better. If the story was written well, the diamonds got a lot of development time, and the pacing wasn't so all over the place that Kingdom Hearts would look brisk by comparison, and there was a significant amount of time dedicated to the diamonds realizing of their own accord that the way they treat their people is horrible, and they start working to provide for their people like real leaders, then we can talk about the ethics of forgiveness. Do we give them that chance, or are their crimes simply too great and their victims cannot be denied proper justice? Would the people of Homeworld even want to give them that chance? Is it fair for Steven to forgive people for their actions toward others and not himself? Is the question of whether compassion is good superseded by the fact that the Diamond's victims don't care and want them dead regardless? Is Steven's anti-violence extremism not enabling the behavior of violent people and putting more people in harm's way? I'd love to talk about all those things. It fascinates me, but the show doesn't get that far. It only goes to, I'm evil and murdered billions of my own people because I'm sad. Stop being sad! Okay, I'm not evil now. Let's ignore my massive list of crimes. Whether compassion or forgiveness is good doesn't matter. The writing is garbage regardless. But this is where the conversation grinds to a halt because the knee-jerk cretins calling me a sociopath ultimately don't recognize the terrible writing. They think Rebecca Sugar is some unappreciated genius and Steven Universe some wonderful and deep show rather than the hodgepodge of half-understood ideas and constant distractions that it really is. There are good forgiveness stories and there are bad forgiveness stories, and most of the forgiveness stories we've been getting for the last few years are bad. And here's the thing, they can be easily fixed. Like, we don't even have to go into all that philosophical shit. This can be fixed almost instantly. How do we make Starlight's redemption work? We dial back the severity of her crimes a lot. We don't even have to change her stupid backstory, we just need her to not go right to 11 from the start. How do we make the Diamond's redemption work? We don't write them as the illegitimate daughters of Stella Kubler and Xehanort. It's not that hard. I'm not making some crazy extremist rant here. The solution to this problem that I won't stop bitching about is so fucking easy to do, and yet so many creators just won't do it for some reason. I said this in Steven Universe's garbage and here's why, and on reflection it was the smartest thing I said, so I'm just gonna replay it for you here. You know, I get it. Redeeming villains is such a trend these days, and some people seem to think it's a really good idea. Sugar clearly thinks so too. Sugar wants to make a world where redemption is always a possibility, and where everyone can get a second chance. But my question is, if that's the road you want to take, then why are the stakes so fucking high? Why is it that every time this story comes up, it's always the people who are hell-bent on destroying everything. Why are the targets of redemption always the most nasty, vile creatures imaginable? I'm not the only one who's noticed this, right? When Friendship is Magic started out, the villains were hammy, over-the-top performance pieces, 
fun times with fun people who were memorable precisely because of just how extra they were. But when they shifted to redemptions for everyone, suddenly the villains got so much nastier. They went so far over the line and went right for the jugular at every possible opportunity. The movie had this directly contrasted. The villain who dies as a jovial doof and the one who gets redeemed is far more nasty and vindictive. In Steven Universe, the villains that don't get redeemed are, well, fun Saturday morning cartoon villains. Aquamarine, Malachite, Holly Blue, most of the corrupted gems, they're fun, performance-driven characters. In Malachite's case, she does literally nothing until it's time for the boss fight. But when it's time to hand out redemption arcs, it's the fascists and the abusers who get first pick. They're the ones who get the second chances. They're the ones who have to be extended a hand. And there's no reason for it to be this way. There's no reason why redemption and forgiveness has to be lashed to such monstrous people. If Sugar wanted redemption to be a core element of the series, why aren't the antagonists just domestic problems? People who have personally wronged you or who have been an uncomfortable presence in your life. Things that are relatively small in the grand scheme of things. Sugar loves Beach City so much she spends half the show there, but when it's time to talk about forgiveness, suddenly it's time to turn to the Galactic Empire? My question is always the same. Why them? Why the Diamonds? Why Rose? Why Lapis? Why Andy? Lars? Ronaldo? Hell, even Kevin are all sitting there with infinitely less horrific baggage that you could easily write a satisfying and far more impactful redemption arc where they actually earn that forgiveness and wouldn't reflect so badly on Sugar. And in all my years of asking that question, be it the Diamonds or Starlight or whoever the fucking terrorist getting a redemption is this week, nobody's ever been able to answer why they had to be this fucking extreme. Forgive and forget is a strange lesson because it's not universal. It's meant to be kept to trivial issues of someone hurting you either accidentally or through ignorance. It's applicable to kids who get their feelings hurt by other kids. The problem is that this lesson reverses itself as you grow up. War, abuse, genocide, these things cannot and should not be forgiven. Forgiveness does not work in these circumstances. It's not an absolute. It only works in a tiny number of cases. The problem is that Steven Universe is about war. It's about abuse. It's about genocide. It's about the things that cannot and should not be forgiven, and yet it insists on doing them anyway. This is the problem. There's a point where redemption and forgiveness stops being an appropriate response to a situation, and there's no rule saying that creators have to make their antagonists go so far over the line at every possible opportunity. They aren't required to do that, and the fact that they do it anyway is a problem that needs to be talked about. Friendship is Magic continuously encouraged children to forgive tyrants and mass murderers. Steven Universe encouraged children to be nice to Nazis. Those are bad things that these shows have done, and continuing to get up on a high horse about, oh, well I guess forgiveness is bad now. Now, huh? Or whatever the fuck it is Cellspecs was on about, as if I'm somehow talking about all forgiveness rather than just this particular extreme, is dishonest and you can go fuck yourself. Trying to reach out and hug a Nazi is not compassion, it's suicide.